Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for being with me today. We first want to introduce our partners in this extensive investigation that's gone on for quite a period of time. John Vecchio is with us today. He's the assist, assistant uh, special agent in charge from the Tampa office of FDLE, and he'll be speaking in just a minute. We have Captain Garcia from the Haines City Police Department, Assistant Chief Brian Dorman from the Bartow Police Department, Lieutenant Black from the Lake Wells Police Department. We also have Glenn uh, Lindell. He is the patrol agent in charge for Border Patrol, our federal partners. I so much appreciate them being with us. The prosecutor that's in charge of filing these charges is Nicole Orr from Brian Haas's office. But I can tell you, if it weren't for these wonderful folks and their agencies and us all working together, this case couldn't have happened. But that's what we do in law enforcement and in this community. We work with our prosecutor, and Brian Haas is just simply the very best, as well as with our federal partners and our city police departments. And as a result, we do remarkable work, and we're about to tell you about that today. In addition to that, I want to tell you that I'm going to link in a deep concern I have, the police chiefs have, the state attorneys have, and the other, other sheriffs around the state about this quote-unquote low-level, nonviolent, bill that Senator Brandis has filed, 300 pages. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go through this presentation today so you can get a snapshot of what he's saying and what's really happening. Let's go back and understand that we named this Operation Meth Death Peddlers. And the reason for that is very simple. Senator Brandis wants you to think that when he wants to reduce minimum mandatories on drug trafficking, when he wants to reduce the sentencing from serving 85% of your 65% sentence, that it's simply low-level, nonviolent offenders. But let me give you this data. There were 68 methamphetamine-related deaths in Polk, Hardy, and Highlands County, the 10th Judicial Circuit, in 2017, which is the last complete year we have data for. And I'm suggesting to you those numbers would have gone up and will go up when we have all of the 2018 data. <laughs> but maybe Senator Brandis is not aware in the state of Florida when 2017, the Florida Medical Examiner's Commission reports 858 meth-related deaths. That means they either died from methamphetamine overdoses, the residual effects of it, or a combination of other drugs with methamphetamine. 858, almost 900 people died in the last complete year, 2017, and I suggest to you those numbers will go up. And I continue to hear this drumbeat around the state of Florida that this is low-level, nonviolent crime. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want the senators, I want the people that's continuing this drumbeat about low-level, nonviolent crimes to go talk to the family members of that 858 that died in 17, and there's going to be probably that or close to 1,000 that died in 18, and try to convince them that that drug is nonviolent, because I know it is, and you know it is. So let's go to our investigation. This started back in 2016 when we learned that Asesion, he's up here on the top left, Nahara, was moving multi-kilos of methamphetamine. In 2017, we advanced the next year that we learned that Martin Delgado, who is here in the pink, was also a multi-kilo dealer of methamphetamine in Polk County. In, the, in 2018, on five separate occasions, our detectives 
working together and the Haida Task Force served five search warrants and mostly on these folks in the blue who were dealing in ounces of methamphetamine. And all this time we're trying to make inroads into our main targets. And then between January and March of 2019, we got a huge break. We were able to do, do a deep dive with our colleagues and our partners here and this deep dive investigation led to the people in the pink. And I want you to see them because not only was Exception the leader of the group, but all of those people in the pink were dealing multi-kilos of methamphetamine, multi-kilos. So we started this investigation and we identified another 30 people that were involved in the recent investigation. Now, we want to tell you that altogether we made 44 arrests. We seized 50 pounds of meth, street value 1.4 million, and we seized four firearms. I love it. I love it when people tell us this is low level, nonviolent crime. They're just gun collectors, I guess. They just happened to have firearms, and one of them was armed when our detectives and our Haida Task Force members took him down. He had a gun in his pocket while he was dealing two kilos of meth. I love it when they tell us that this drug doesn't kill people. And it's killing hundreds of people a day, I mean, uh, hundreds of people a year in the state of Florida. And it's kill killing thousands and thousands and thousands of people across the United States every year. And they want to tell us this is a nonviolent, low level, not serious drug. They're lying to the public. They are absolutely, unequivocally lying to the public. I digress, but let me go on. And nine of these folks are in the country illegally. Nine of them. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to show you this photograph up close. A session is in the country illegally. And I'm also going to talk about, and you'll see their pictures up here, Jose Chavez and Pablo Valdez, they're not only in the country illegally, they just got here two months ago. So they didn't waste any time coming here and dealing multi-kilos of methamphetamine. So when they tell you these folks are coming here for a better life, well, I'm certain there is a whole lot of them that are. These are coming here to destroy lives of people in the United States with their methamphetamine. And some of them, heck, just got here as little as two weeks ago. Last week, the Hillsborough Sheriff's Office did a press conference and they called it Ice Cubes. Hillsborough Sheriff's Office did a fantastic job on that investigation. I'm very proud of my colleague, Sheriff Chronister and his team. They're remarkable. The meth, the, the multi-kilos of meth that they made the arrest for last week came from these folks. Sheriff Chronister was asked last week, well, where did the meth come from? And he said, oh, I can't tell you at this time. And he couldn't because the investigation here was still ongoing. But Sheriff, thank you for your work. And at the end of the day, this is where the meth were coming from, these folks. So let me lay this out. Nicole Ower, our prosecutor, and boy, is she tough. She filed 85 felony charges and 50 misdemeanors on these folks along the way. I want to point this out, not that, in case you haven't got the picture yet. These folks, these low-level, nonviolent drug dealers, according to Senator Brandis and others 
across the state, had a previous history of 329 felony charges and 142 misdemeanor charges. Did you hear me? These low-level, nonviolent, illegal criminals and others, because there's only nine illegal criminals here that are dealing meth and killing people in this country, had 329 felony charges previously and 325 misdemeanors. <laughs> now, collectively, they pled down to 94 felonies and 142 misdemeanors. Now, Senator Brandis thinks, on top of their plea deal that they got, that they ought to go down from 85% of the prison sentence to 65%. Come on, man. What are you doing? Who are you listening to? Who told you that was a good idea so we could release these folks early from prison so they can prey on people and deal kilos of meth and kill our children across the state and the nation? Oh, we used to have nebia holes. That meant people had to prove where their money came from so we'd know that it didn't come from ill-gotten gains in order to bond out of jail. With well, the courts rule, that's illegal. We can't do nebia holes. So two of the people have bonded out. Even if they had a bondsman, they'd have to come up with twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 cash. Huh. I wonder where they got that money from. Maybe dealing that stuff there, that low-level, nonviolent drug that kills hundreds of people in the state of Florida every year. So let's talk about Asession Nahara. He's 45. He is known in the drug world as the king of ice. He's from Davenport. He's the ringleader, the CEO of the operation. He deals multi-kilos, millions of dollars worth of drugs. I've told you he's here illegally, but that doesn't bother him. In 2004, he was arrested for trafficking in methamphetamine in Georgia. He was never deported. He has been arrested by the federal authorities four times and not deported. But he leaves and goes back to Mexico and comes back and they catch him again. You know that catch and release stuff at the border? So four different times he's left the country on his own, come back, caught again, left the country, come back, and he's still here dealing meth. Not only is he dealing meth, he's the CEO of a huge multi-million dollar meth ring. He's got a family affair going on. George Lopez, who's his son-in-law, he's a multi-kilo dealer of meth. And Sierra Zorarte, she's the money runner and the daughter of Nahara. Are you ready for this? You know, there's some stuff, you, it's got to be true because you just can't make it up. Did I tell you that he's dealing millions of dollars of meth? Did I tell you that he has roosters? And he buries his cash in the backyard. And his roosters were scratching and pecking and digging up the money. Did I tell you that? His roosters are digging up the money that he's buried in the backyard. You want to know something else you can't believe? You ready for this? His kids are on WIC, federal assistance, and grandkids if he's got them, I guess. Multi-million dollar drug dealer here illegally, roosters pecking up cash in the backyard, and they're getting federal assistance. You know, if that just doesn't rip the button off of your shirt, I don't know what does. There's George Lopez, the son-in-law. He just deals in multi-kilos. 
He had the handgun in his pants when we took him down on a two kilo deal. That's right. Our undercover detectives from these agencies risk their life to take him in custody because he had a handgun and was ready to use it. And there's Sierra. She's the daughter and the money person. She also deals ounces of meth. I don't know if she deals the ounces of meth before or after she goes to the Wick store. But anyway, she dealt them. How about Mara Valenzuela? 11 pounds of meth in that cooler. And she brought that cooler with 11 pounds of meth from Tucson, Arizona on a Greyhound bus. Do you hear me? On a Greyhound bus. She said normally she flies. I don't know, maybe it was a time of year she wanted to see the scenery. But she brought 11 pounds of meth from Tucson. She has relatives in Plant City, and she brags that she's a member of the most dangerous drug cartel in the world, the Sinanola. Now, you're having to listen to me. I'm from Polk County, Florida, trying to say these things, okay? And this cartel also deals in human trafficking, far, firearms, anything illegal where they can make money, and they're very dangerous folks. Oh, by the way, she brought her daughter and son to do the deal with us with the 11 pounds. Another family operation. Richard Walker, I can't leave him out. He's 66 years old. He's a bank robber. He did 20 years for robbing banks with a firearm, aggravated assault. He's a multi-pound purchaser and a multi-ounce seller in Polk County. By the way, we VOP'd him. He lives in Hollywood, but he comes up here to buy his dope and deals kind of with this little quadrant of people on the corner as ounce dealers. And then there's Antonio Valdez Mendoza. She brought, she's, uh, he is here illegally. He brought in 24 pounds of meth from California. He has a previous criminal history. And he's the one that actually provided the meth for the Hillsborough County case. Then there's Marcos Antonio Asuncion. He's 36. He was arrested by the sheriff's office in 2017 for discharge of a firearm at a bar. He's here illegally. State attorney did a good job. He spent time, and they deported him. You think, whew, he's gone. It's not that easy. We got an outstanding warrant for him because he's now in Mexico directing the multi-kilo meth operation that's going on here. He's the one putting the connections together to get the drugs sent up here. We've got outstanding warrants for him. Oh, by the way, if you don't think these people aren't violent, his girlfriend, yes, Yahara Latore, was sentenced to 10 years for shooting another lady in the parking lot of the Walmart in Haines City, I think last year or year before last. James Robinson, old bud. Bud, 76 years old. Now, why do I show you, bud? because everybody needs to know about Bud. You see, there's these people marching around, same ones that's talking about low-level, nonviolent drug offenses that says, we ought to let senior citizens out of prison early. Well, first off, you know what their definition of a senior citizen is? 55 years old. That, that hurts my heart. But anyway, Bud's 76. So newsflash, if you think you can't commit crime at 76, the dude is an ounce dealer of meth at 76 years of age. Oh, he's already been to prison for trafficking in meth. He's been arrested for sex offenses back to 1964. 
and sex offense against a child in 1976. He's done a seven-year minimum mandatory, and they don't think we should lock folks up like this. He's a menace. He's dangerous. Before I, I close out, and I've got some a news flash that I want to give you, but I'll wait on that until after Assistant uh, Supervisor in Charge, ASAC, John Vicchio, has an opportunity to speak with you. And I can't brag enough on FDLE, the teamwork that they provide with us is totally remarkable and we work with them anytime we get outside the borders of Polk County and we'll chase, chase people wherever we have to chase them. We can always count on FDLE. They're our partners and they're there with us and they're just totally awesome. And once again, we couldn't have been successful without you. Thank you. Come talk to us. Good morning. My name is John Becky. I'm an assistant special agent in charge for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in the Tampa Bay area. I'm glad to talk with you this morning and to thank Sheriff Judd and his team to talk about the dismantling of this organization. Last year, FDLE purchased one half pound of methamphetamine from a well-documented mid well, well mid-level drug trafficker. Herrick Rea delivered one half pound of methamphetamines to an undercover FDLE agent in a hotel. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement and the Polk County Sheriff's Office quickly realized that this trafficker was part of a larger drug organization and that, that was already being investigated by the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Both agencies combined our resources to dismantle this international drug trafficking organization and disrupt the flow of illegal drugs into the state of Florida and ultimately the Tampa Bay area. The organization was made up of upper level traffickers and distrib distributors, it was close knit and was hard to infiltrate. But the persistence of detectives and agents was unrelenting. As the flow of drugs from Mexico made their way into Florida, we were determined to shut it down. FDLE agents and Polk County investigators dedicated hundreds of hours into this case, which resulted in multiple arrests, the seizure of large amounts of illegal drugs and firearms. As you see, where there are drugs, there are guns. Thank you to Sheriff Judd, the tremendous work of his people, our dedicated partners, and FDLE agents who helped help this investigation come to a close. We hope this sends a message to our traffickers, not in our backyard. Thank you, sir. As we close out today, and I'm going to branch over, I, I think you heard me talk about these low-level, nonviolent drug offenders. Currently, Senator Brandis in the Florida Senate is pushing a now 300-page criminal justice reform bill he dropped last week. And he says, you know, we need to reduce from 85 to 65 percent these nonviolent, low-level drug offenders, do away with minimum mandatories, give judges discretion. Ladies and gentlemen, crime in Florida is at a 47-year low. It's at a 47-year low because the wisdom of the legislature and Governor Lawton Childs a dear friend of mine who was governor at the time when the felons owned Florida. When in Europe they were warning tourists, don't come to Florida on vacation because you can end up coming back home to Europe in a pine box or being robbed or beat up or shot in rest areas. The Florida legislature gave us 1020 life, minimum mandatory sentences, and precipitously the out of control crime that was going like this started going like this. And now they're saying, oh, we're being too tough on criminals. When in fact, statistically, we're only sending maybe 3.6, less than four, out of every 100 criminals we arrest this year in the state of Florida, statistically, less than four of them will do any time at all in a state prison. And only the worst of the worst end up in state prison for a long period of time. And that's these people 
that are dealing kilos and kilos and kilos, or either they have long histories that they don't get the message. But still there are those that said, hey, it's a drug offense, and Senator Brandis has filed this bill, and it's going to do great because it's only going to affect reducing the sentence from 85 to 65 on low-level nonviolent offenses. I'm provided this data here. Here's what would receive a reduced sentence. Lewd molestation. Attempted lewd molestation. Lewd battery. Child neglect. Possession of child pornography. Promoting the performance of a child in child pornography. Selling or buying minors. Solicitation of a child to commit an unlawful sex act. Possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, human trafficking, animal cruelty, vehicular homicide, elderly exploitation, DUI with serious bodily harm, and drug trafficking. Does that sound like minor, nonviolent felonies to you? They're playing word games with the people of the state of Florida. I can tell you, this is only a partial list that we've been able to discern so far because this 300-page bill is very complicated and it cross-referenced other statutes and we're still going through it. We don't know all the dangerous stuff that's in this legislation. <clears throat> well, heck, I guess Brandis talked to Nancy Pelosi. We'll vote for it and pass it and then we'll figure out what's in it later on. Folks, what I'm telling you is the intent of the people of Florida is to make sure that we give opportunities to people that go to prison so that they're trained and they have skills. And I'm all for, and the Florida sheriffs and the chiefs and prosecutors, we're for appropriately measured criminal justice reform because you should always do your very best to improve the system you have but not tear the legs and the foundation out that got us to this 47-year low crime rate. It didn't just happen. People didn't just wake up and say, gosh, I think I'll start obeying the law. We had very, very tough sentencing for very, very bad people. And these folks, a lot of them have already been in and done minimum mandatories and done prison stretches. And they're back. We need to talk to our legislators. And I want to brag on the House of Representatives. They're standing firm. The feedback I got, they're standing firm in telling us this is not acceptable in the House. Well, it shouldn't be acceptable in the Senate either. And I truly believe from the bottom of my heart, the overwhelming majority of our senators don't realize how dangerous that 300-page Brandis bill is. But it'll turn these kind of people back out to sell kilos of drugs that ultimately trickles down and ends up killing hundreds of people and your children across this state I can't stand that. <coughs> Do I want to help those that are addicted to drugs? Absolutely, unequivocally, yes. Do we want to help break this cycle? Yes. But you can't turn the drug traffickers loose. You can't turn the child pornographers loose. You can't allow people early release for solicitation of a child for an unlawful sex act or human trafficking trafficking or animal cruelty. Anyway, I'm not out of energy, but I am out of breath. Do y'all have any questions?